So if you've been struggling with sticky dough, then this video is definitely for you. I'm gonna explain some of the important considerations to avoid sticky dough. I'm gonna show you a little experiment that's gonna help you out before you even start baking. And I'm gonna show you how you can tweak other people's recipes to suit you. So today we're gonna to look specifically at wheat flour because I think that's where most people begin their baking journey. Now it may seem obvious, but choose a flour that's been specifically produced for bread baking. So it's either gonna be called bread flour or strong flour. And there is a really good reason for this. They've got a higher protein content and there are two native proteins in wheat flour, glutenin and gliadine. And when they come into contact with water, they form the strong gluten network that we're looking for in bread baking. So we want that higher percentage of protein. Now, like with any great rule, there always seems to be an exception and there's one here, whole wheat flour, may have a high protein content, 13, 14, or 15%, but it's less refined, which means it retains some of its bran and germ. And this bran and germ actually gets in the way of that gluten structure forming. So it may not be as strong as the white flour that has the same uh, percentage of protein, but that's not a problem. We still wanna use whole wheat flour. It tastes great and it's really nutritious, but it is something that we need to bear in mind when we're making bread. Now I've made three doughs here, all with 50 grams of flour and 65% hydration. I've covered them, they've been sitting out on my work surface for an hour and a half. And let's just have a quick look at them. The first dough was made with a flour that's got 2.5% protein content. You can see the dough handles really nicely, it's lovely and squishy, but it's not stretchy, it breaks easily, so it's not gonna form a nice strong dough. So this probably isn't what we'd wanna choose for baking bread. The second flour, a whole wheat flour, it's got a protein content of 11.5%. But you can see it feels nice, but as I start to stretch it, it breaks very easily. Now the third flour is my go-to everyday flour. It's got a high protein content, actually 13.2%. And you can see how stretchy this is, how well hydrated it is. This is gonna be perfect for baking bread. But what happens if we want to add the whole wheat flour? Well, let's try blended those two flours together and see what we get. I've left them sitting out on my work surface for another hour and you can see now we've got the strength from the high protein flour, but we've got the whole wheat flour included. So we've got the flavor and the nutrition. So you can play around with different flours to see what works best for you. You can try blending two flours together. And just remember that it's good to look for a flour that's got a 12% protein content or above. And this is really gonna help you avoid dealing with a flour and ending up with a sticky dough that just doesn't form into a decent shape for baking our loaf. So the second point, really important, know your hydration. Two key points here. First, know what hydration you're comfortable working with. And secondly, how much water the flour can actually absorb. Now I've made up three doughs here with my high protein flour. One's been hydrated to 60%, the second 65%, and the third to 70%. Now, to work out the hydration, this is what you do. So 50 grams of flour times by 60, which is our target hydration, hit the percent key on the calculator, and then the equals key. Now I've left these doughs out for an hour on the work surface to hydrate properly. And now let's have a look and see what they're doing. The first dough's nice, it feels nice to work with, but you know, it's not that stretchy. And as I try to form it into a piece of dough, it takes a bit of work and it doesn't stick to itself very easily. That second piece of dough is better. It certainly stretches a little bit more and it sticks to itself more easily. That's the 65%. So this would be a good dough. Personally, I really like the last one, the 70%. It's got really nice stretchy quality. It bends, it shapes very easily, and it sticks to itself. So for me, I would choose the 70, but again, this is down to personal preference. But for a beginner, I'd suggest somewhere between 65 to 70% is gonna be a great starting point. But do this test, it's good fun, and you'll get to know your flour and your hydration a lot better. Third key point, weigh your ingredients. Now I know a lot of people comment and say, Philip, you know, you don't really help us out because you're not giving your recipe in cups or in volume. And there's a really good reason for that. I don't think it's accurate enough. And I'm gonna try and show you that here. Now my glass holds 200 grams of water. I'm gonna fill the glass up with flour, scrape off the excess and weigh it. And we've got 198 grams. So let's give that another go. 
Okay, now we've got 226 grams. That's 28 grams of difference. That just is not accurate enough for consistent baking. And if you're trying to achieve the same hydration with your dough each time, then you're not gonna get that. One day your dough might be stickier, the next it may not. So just invest 10 or 20 euros or dollars or pounds into a good set of scales and weigh your ingredients in grams. It's gonna make a huge difference to your baking. So what are we on here? Number four, adapting recipes to suit you. So you've worked out what flour you want to use, you kind of know what hydration you've got, but you're following somebody else's recipe and the dough's too sticky. Well, you can actually check that out before you start baking with their recipe. Let's have a quick look at Mr. Burtonette, Mr. Richard Burtonette's simple white dough recipe. He's using 500 grams of strong bread flour and 350 grams of water. Now to work out the hydration before we start, we'd look at his recipe, we'd take the 350 grams of water, divide it by the 500 grams of flour and then times it by 100. Now that gives us 70%. So we know that his his recipe is 70% hydration. If we like working with 65%, then we can make that small adjustment accordingly. And that's really good to know before you go into a recipe. But one thing to bear in mind, this works really well for a basic recipe where the flour is the main component of drying ingredients. But if the recipe's got nuts, seeds, dried fruits in there, then my suggestion would be to bake the recipe as it is and take some really detailed notes. And if the dough comes out too sticky, then you can adjust it next time. Which brings me on to my next point. Keep a journal. Get yourself a notebook and a pen. And it's better to do this handwritten than it is with a phone or something like that because your hands are often going to be sticky. Your digits are going to be covered in with flour and stuff. But you want to keep notes on what you're doing. The ingredients, the temperature, the amount of water, the type of flour you've used. And this is a really good exercise because you can always come back and refer to your recipe again. You can keep notes and really work out what's going on. This is also super helpful for learning to use your ingredients and for avoiding that dreaded sticky dough. Time. Patience. I think this is overlooked by most people and it's something that can really help with our baking. It's a key ingredient actually of our baking. Now we're obviously going to put two ingredients together, one dry, a flour, and the other one wet, which is our water, and we want to mix them. So our first idea or the first thing we're probably going to do is to dive in and start beating it into submission to get those mixed together. Now my advice would actually be to mix the flour and water together, bring it into a rough dough, and then just leave it sitting on the side covered for 15 to 20 minutes and do nothing. Then come back, turn it out onto our workbench and you can start to work it and you're gonna feel that the dough is a lot less sticky and easier to handle. This is really gonna help you out if you struggle with sticky digits. So choose the right flour. Work out what hydration works best for the flour, but also for you, that's just as important. Weigh your ingredients, accuracy and consistency. Get a journal, write everything down so that you can refer back to it, especially when the seasons change, it gets warmer or colder, you can see what happened before. That's gonna help with the sticky dough as well. And lastly, time. Be patient, sometimes doing nothing is just as important as doing something. So leave that dough to sit and then come back to it and you're gonna find the dough is easier to manage. But guys, if you've got any questions about this, let me know in the comments. A huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.